What's up, this is Dope Beasy. I'm working on my episode of Civil's TV in my neighborhood. Another, now, I'm glad I went to jail. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I'm not glad I went to jail, but I am. Because if I would've never went to jail, I would've, man, ain't no telling where the fuck I'd be right now. I'd probably be in jail for something way worse, or I'd be dead somewhere, like. How was it growing up on this block? It's gonna make you a man. We're gonna turn a grown a little kid to a grown man. Real fast. You know what I'm saying, man? You know this. The bottom of the bottom, man. The slums, man, the trenches, man. What is this? What they say this is the poorest city in America? East Cleveland. Literally the poorest city in America. Down there and shit. It's my nigga little wheelhouse and shit. You know, he dead now. But you know, that's where that's where I used to be at all the time. Like I used to like when my mama put me out, I'd be in his attic all the time. Like I'd be hiding over there and shit like that. You feel me? Like we used to have this motherfucker so goddamn sold up. Like ask anybody, like like we go all the way back to them Taliban days. Like niggas know what's up with us. Like we've been, yeah, we've been putting on. We've been having the whole city on smash. Feel me? This shit legendary over here. We always had the lit rappers in the city from the, you feel me, from here. It was just destined to be. Like, this how this shit was just supposed to be. This how it was supposed to happen, man. I was supposed to be the chosen one, man. When you from those, man, you chose. For sure. Like, niggas know. Man, I'm, I'm the same dope beasy. I've been the same way since I was born. Like, I ain't never changed up. Nigga, tell you that. Look at me right here, right now. It's on me. Yeah. In the trenches, though, like. Post out here like it's regular. Like one thing I always promised my niggas and shit, I always told them no matter what, no matter how long I'm gone, I'm gonna always come back. No matter what, I don't care how big I get, I don't care about none of that. That's what we got. Where your girlfriend at, bro? Right here, man. Where your girl at? Where your girl at? She wanna come right here. Hear this? Greg, you trying to get your dick sucked on camera? Huh? Trying to get your dick sucked on camera? So I'm Christian, man. I don't. Like, even just looking at this shit right now, like, how the fuck did I do it? Like, I be, I still don't believe it. You feel me? Niggas don't make it out this city, man. This shit is, like, legendary. Like, I don't think y'all understand how monumental this is, like. You did it. Just for, for, the, for, the, for the city to just even have, like, you feel me, a superstar to really get bread from this motherfucker, like a real superstar. Like, I just dropped my album, like, it's so crazy. I was looking at this shit when it dropped, and I, and I, I'm looking like, damn, bro, that's me on the top ten charts. Like, you the top ten charts? What? And out of every rapper in the world, I'm sitting up here next to the who? I'm looking at the niggas right around. I'm like, damn, what I'm doing streaming like these niggas? What the fuck is going on? I'm up there next to Pop Smoke and goddamn the 21 Savages, the Metro Boomers, the motherfucking NBA Young Boys, the motherfucking. Oh, man, what? We got in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this shit crazy. This shit crazy, man. I just be looking at this shit, though. This shit a blessing. I was satisfied with, like, the life that I was living back then. Like, you feel me? That's all I knew. A nigga was content with that shit. So it's like, then when I make it to this level, and now I'm seeing that this, like, how this shit is now, and I look back, I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I'm talking about I was really thugging. Like, majority of these rap niggas, they be faking, like. You feel me? I really, I really come from that. I really did that. Even though I was bad as fuck, I was still always focused though. Like, like I'm one of them motherfucking, um, I'm like one of those smart niggas that just do dumb shit though. Like, you feel me? Like, I always been smart as fuck. Like, I always been like a genius. Like, no matter what it was, I was always working, like trying to make this shit happen, like every day. Like, even I was teaching myself how to record. I was recording myself. I got a, 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 a $200 microphone and was motherfucking recording in my room. Even when I was a younger kid, when I was younger than that, I used to motherfucking goddamn fucking plug the fucking headphones up in the computer jack, like rapping in the fucking, in the headphones on Windows Movie Maker, <laughs> trying to record a song, like, you know what I'm saying? So I've I been, I've been, I knew what I wanted to be. I knew I was gonna be great. I knew I was gonna be a superstar. I even used to play football as a kid, like, 
I was gonna be a fucking superstar running back. I was a fucking dog. Like, no matter what the fuck I want to do, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make sure that shit happen. Like, I also was, I was in the field. Down there, so like robbing them people for their phones and shit. I ain't had shit. My favorite, my favorite part about the city though is just it's the ratchetness for me. I'm glad I get to be the face of the city, like, and I get to paint the picture because. A lot of people on the outside, they didn't really know that we was how we is for real. Like, they don't know that, they don't pay attention to the fact that we always at the top of the murder rate. They don't know that we always, we one of the world's most dangerous cities. And they don't understand that. People don't be knowing that. They just look at Cleveland and think of like LeBron James and shit like that. When I dropped the walk down and, and LeBron made the, he, he did the video dancing to it, it went viral. Brian down there, you changed my life. I yeah, love the fuck him. They try to whoop our ass over the Browns. Man, and they, they think and they think we got LeBron James and, and the Cleveland Browns. All the sports players, they don't, they don't know. They don't come. They don't come past a certain part of the goddamn city. They get this. <laughs> they, don't come, they don't come over here, man. So, you know, another thing I'm real close with is like Kevin Durant. Why is this my friend? How is he my friend? How is Kevin Durant my friend? <laughs> like, I'm just a little dirty nigga from East Cleveland. How I'm friends with Kevin Durant? It's so much hate here and so much negativity, but I don't let that shit get to me. You feel me? I still love my city. I still, I still put on. I'm gonna do it regardless. No matter how much niggas fake love me and how much, like, you feel me? I still, I love y'all for real. Yo, we got a major organization here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Oh, hell no, no. Yeah, man, that's right. Hey, you smoke king? Hey, hey. Make a whole nation. How the fuck we do? We ain't got no organization. We have a fucking record label. We is fucking rappers and fucking entertainers and shit like that. We is not a gang. We ain't no gang members. We not. I keep trying to tell y'all that. Other community. Do I look like I gang bang, bitch? I gang. <laughs> Matter of fact, I do all this fucking Matter of fact, bitch. Matter of fact, in hey, hey, peace, nip. Hey, no, man. <laughs> hey, we do, though. We bang all. gangs, nigga. Bang we don't gang bang, we bang gangs, nigga. This T.Y. at the stove. Like, you go listen to my music and shit, like, you probably heard about me. I know you know who it is. When I was growing up, this was, you feel me, it was us too. Like, we was the first young niggas over here that really jumped on the porch and really was playing with them pistols. Like, I always, this, this was like my transportation. Like, even like this bus right here, this the 41. This, um... Like, when, when I started going to high school and shit, you know, I got kicked out of all the school districts. My mama and shit, we had to move, you feel me? She tried to move me to like the suburbs and shit. So we moved to a city that's called Bedford and shit. So that's where she tried to make me go to high school at. But like, she was like expecting that that shit was gonna make me like better. Like, like her perception of it was like, we gonna keep him out of trouble. This gonna, this gonna get my son on the right path and shit like that. But it didn't turn out that way. When we when we moved out there and shit, it actually made me worse. So like when I when I got out there, I was like I was like 14. So that's that's when around the time when I really started hitting licks and shit. Like like I was always bad as fuck. I was always stealing. I was always doing that. But when I got out there, that's when I like started robbing niggas and shit like that. Because niggas out there was just so sweet and they just like they wouldn't like me because you feel me. That's where a lot of the section eight and shit at like. That's what we was on. We moved on Section 8. You just take shit from niggas. That's when I, I just really started robbing niggas because I just like, man, this nigga so soft. You just gonna let me do this shit. Doing shit I shouldn't have been doing. I was all that bitch shooting shit up, all type of shit. And then like, I'm not even going to school sometimes. I'm skipping. My mama think I'm in school. I'm on nose. And that plaza right over there and shit. I remember it used to be a Mr. Allen. <laughs> yeah. Yup, motherfucking. I used to get two pairs of shoes a year. 29, two for 50. <laughs> I used to get two pairs of shoes a year. So it, it shit like that when I just think about like how shit used to be, like how fucking poor we was, like to, to, I'm, now I'm just walking through the hood with 50 racks on me, like in my hand. I ain't put the shit, I ain't put it up yet. I'm in Future back in like 2011. That's when I dropped Boys in the Hood around that time. So that was, that was August 2011. So the day he dropped True Story, I was listening to his mixtape. I'm like, man, 
This nigga hard as fuck, bro. It's like the second song on the CD. The song called Free Band Gang. Yeah, I just joined the Free Band Gang. Yeah, hey, niggas ain't hip to that, cause y'all I don't know nothing about that. Y'all ain't real, yeah. So motherfucking, when I heard that song, I'm like, man, you know what? This nigga my favorite rapper right now, and I like the name of his game. Free Band Gang, I like that name. So you know what, I wanna be Free Band Gang. This is how life works. The same day, he got on fucking uh on Ustream. Ustream is like it's like a uh, I would say it's it's like an Instagram live. It was like an old website, like it's where you you can get on live and, and talk to your fans and shit like that. So he get on Ustream. I go in the room. So he talking and shit. Da, da, da. You know, I'm, I'm typing in the chat box. I'm like, hey. What's up, bro? I'm trying to be free bands. He like, he like, yeah, salute, 1,000. Yeah, you free bands. Da, 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 da. So he talking to me like I'm a fan or something, though. So he like, he like, yeah, you free bands. I'm like, shit, all right. Don't forget you told me that. <laughs> so, boom. I'm so observant and shit. I'm so observant. I see, I see a motherfucker. I see a motherfucker that was really free bands in the chat too. I DM, I, well not DM, I, I messaged him on the side like, hey, you see Future just told me I was free bands, bro. You see he just said that. You just watched him tell me that in front of all y'all. He's like, yeah, da 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 I'm like, shit, what's his number? And he gave me Future number. I'm like, swear, don't give me Future number? All right, bet, watch this. He give me future number and shit. I'm calling him. Sometimes he don't, he don't answer and shit. Da, da, da. Boom, I finally get him to pick up. I'm like, shit, what's up, bro? This dope boy. I'm the nigga you just told he was free bands. <laughs> he like, yeah, what do you, you could tell? I could tell he didn't remember even who the fuck he was talking to. So I'm like, shit, what's your email? He give me his email. I start blowing his shit up. Send him song after song. Boom, he fucking with me though. So, he like, man, that shit hard. Uh, uh. So I'm like, hey, I need you to do me a favor. Since you told me I was free bands, I need you to motherfucking do this skit for me. So, I'm like, shit, just leave it on my voicemail. And I'm gonna put it on my mixtape. So boom. He leave it on. He leave a. Uh, he leave a skit on my voicemail. Like da da da. Dope boy. Da da da. Go listen to it right now. It's on Boys in the Hood. Mixtape I dropped with Lex Luger. That was that was my breakthrough project too. That's what that's what that's what really started all this shit for real. You feel me? It was some bullshit at first for real. So time got it going on and we started like drifting away and shit. Though he changed his number and shit. Now I ain't got no way to get in contact with this nigga. So, so boom. Me being me, I'm hitting up his fucking, his manager and shit like that. I'm like, shit, what's up, bro? I'm trying to do this. He like, he tell me off the rip. He say, nigga, you ain't free bands. Like, propane. Matter of fact, nigga, yeah. He say, you ain't free. He told you that as a fan. I'm like, damn. So what the fuck I got to do to become an artist? So he like, uh... He's like, man, just, just keep working. Blah, blah, blah. He told you that as a fan. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right. So, boom. I like where it fall back a little bit. I just get to doing my thing. So, boom, I get to drop and shit. So, every time I drop some shit, I send it to propane, though. I'm like, shit, bro. Listen to this. I'm like, shit, I just dropped this. Look at these numbers, though. Like, my shit going up. Now, I dropped the Boys in the Hood 2 mixtape. Like, a month later, I had a song called Don't Play That. It's with Lil Mouse. That that was my first first song I ever did that got a million views. Like that was my first shit that went up. Like I get a call, Propane called me. He like, hey, I got somebody that want to talk to you. I'm like, Who the fuck want to talk to me? He had future the phone. Like yo, is you ready? Hell yeah, nigga, I'm ready. So boom, they like, it's time, you free bands. 
So at the time, Pro was my manager. Pro ended up becoming my manager. And you feel me? I had the free band shit going, but it still wasn't really official, official. Like, we just now really start. Now we about to start linking and start being around. I still ain't even met him to that day. One of my best friends and shit, he had ended up, he killed himself on an accident. One thing I never do, I don't, like, no matter how much I play with a gun and shit, I don't put my finger on the trigger when I'm playing with that bitch, though. Like, I always put my hand on the outside, like, you feel me? So, like, I do shit like that, and I put that bitch on my head and be talking shit, but I'm playing around. But he was trying to, like, do the same thing and just, like, be like me, but he ended up fucking blowing this shit out. Like, right after that, end up getting a situation with Future. And then, but mind you, when that shit happened, I got, I caught a case. They was trying to charge me with the murder at first. They were trying to say I did it. My nigga Mills, that's the one who killed himself. He was, he was like, he was the main person telling me like, bro, you need, you need to be Future, nigga. Future the hardest rapper out. He about to be the biggest thing. Like, he was the one drilling that shit in my head for real. He the one who made me a Future fan. He the one who, you feel me? When they came, they came to search my house and shit like that. I got caught with like two guns and shit, but one of them was reported stolen. So I'm telling Future and shit like, hey, I'm fighting this case. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't care about that. Like, you feel me? I don't, I don't need paperwork to make me gang and shit. Like, you got my loyalty. Like, you don't have to, you feel me? Like, I don't really, I don't care if I'm really signed or not. Like, we got to understand that you told me I'm gang. That's what it is. But as I catch my case, I'm like, shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie, that paperwork will look good in court. I'm like, shit, can we just finish my, really do it, like really do my deal and shit. Nigga, they give me the contract and shit. Boom, that's when I officially signed the free bands. So boom, but the money I got, I took it and I had to buy a lawyer. So. I ain't really get to even, I ain't get to enjoy it. Like the money, I, I, I got a lawyer and then I used it for jail. So motherfucking all this shit going on, I'm talking about, I mean, nigga, Busta Rhymes, this nigga, that nigga. I'm like, man, what the fuck? I'm really around rapper shit now. But whole time, I got a case on my head and I'm about to go to jail. So, I enjoyed that shit for like five months. I get to see what that life like. And it's so crazy. I was in the studio with Future and shit when he was, he recorded the song, honest. Like when he recorded that song, I'm like, damn, before it came out, we was, and I was a part of the discussion when we was like, man, this the one. Like, this is gonna be the single, this is what we about to push, nigga, this is what it is. I go to jail, I'm in the rain, nigga. They give you these little radios and shit. I'm listening to the radio. I just hear that song come on. I'm like, man, that's when it hit me. Like, I just fucked this shit up. Like, I just threw my whole life away. Some dumb ass shit. Even in jail, I ain't gonna lie, I was thugging though. Like, but that's how I passed my time. That's what, that's what kept me cool. Like, that's what. That's what, it, it made the shit, I ain't gonna say it, that's, I ain't gonna lie, that shit was fun. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Certain moments in jail be fun, though, like, jail is a fucked up place to be. Like, it's like the worst shit, it's like the worst shit ever, though. You gonna have the worst days of your life in there. And it, it but, I ain't gonna lie, certain, certain days and certain shit that go on, it be like, it be fun. So, boom, I finally get out. I'm like, oh shit, it's my turn now. Now I'm in the mix. Now it's up. Months go by. I drop my first mixtape. Streets need me. That bitch changed my whole life. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Coming home from jail, I thought that shit was gonna be easier than it was. I had to put that work in. I had to like down there start all the way over. The advice I got from Future is like, the way my work ethic is, it really, it came from him. Because he he made me realize, like, bro, you got to rap. Like, as much as you can. Rap your heart out as much as you can. Go to the studio and rap as much as you can. Do five, six, seven songs a night. The process of making Demons Are Us. Me and Sasa have been talking about doing a mixtape together. Like, we like, man, we're going to do an album together. Da, 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 da. But you feel me? Time just be going past, you know, a nigga, be, he be doing him, I be doing me. Like, we both be busy. Like, shit, it be, shit be going on. 
So one day I'm just like, man, I'm ready to drop again. What should I do? You know what? I'm about to do my album with Southside. I call Southside, I, I tell him, I'm like, hey, where you at? We ain't about to make this difficult or nothing. I'm about to set the whole trip up. I'm coming out to where are you at? He's like, I'm in Miami. Bet, I'm coming to Miami. Get a game, fly to Miami. Boom, get the house to stay out there for a week. Every day, me and Southside in the studio. I recorded that whole album in one week. What, that first week? Matter of fact, I ain't, it wasn't even a whole week, it was five days. Recorded like 21 songs. So I know the formula to this shit. So even recording the Demons R Us, I did that shit on purpose. Because I've been, I be trying new shit. Like I be trying to see what the people like. So I drop shit and I be trying to be versatile and shit. But then I got to a point where I feel like, man, I want my core fan base back. Like I want to satisfy them. The walk downs and the minivans and shit, how I got like that old school vibe. I knew people was gonna start stealing that shit and want to start doing that shit. Future told me to, like, actually, he the one who made me really lock in and focus on that shit. When I motherfucker, I dropped minivans, and minivans went up. The fans was on that bitch talking about, uh, oh, this nigga, you sound like the new Easy e My shit, swear I sound like Easy e How y'all saying I sound like Easy e and I fucking remixed the Juvenile song, like. Like, all this jewelry, the nice clothes. The shit that come with his life and all that shit, like, I like it. I fuck, I mean, you feel me? I can't. That's what a nigga, <laughs> you so annoying. <laughs> it's like, it's like when you, when you, when you just, at first I did, like, this shit, it made me happy and shit, like, I like, but now it's to the point where it's like, all right, bro, um, I got money, okay, so what? I'm spending my money, I'm doing this and that, like, it don't. It don't really make me as excited as it used to, but at the end of the day, I'm still I'm still blessed and I still appreciate it. But that shit, like, so like being around my niggas and shit, and, and coming back to where I came from, like they they remember me from when I was little dope boy running around trying to be a rapper. Like, it's not different at all to me because the love's still the same. It's like they they understand like. That's one thing I love about my hood. Like a lot of a lot of rappers, they go through shit to where they niggas they niggas start changing on them and they start looking at them different because they they getting bigger, they getting richer and shit like that. And niggas just get to acting weird because that's what comes with success. My hood ain't never did that to me. They showed me the same love since forever. They ain't never switched on me, never. And that's why I always tell them, no matter what, I don't care how long I'm gone or what I got going on, y'all know I'm working. I'm just trying to get this shit together. I'm trying to get to the next level. I'm trying to get as big as I could be. But one thing for sure, I don't care how long I'm going, I'm going to always come back.